Good evening, and welcome to worship on this Monday, Thursday evening. Sometimes this day is called Holy Thursday. The word Monday uh, is used by Protestant churches usually. Monday comes from a Latin word, mandate, because on this night, Jesus washed the feet of the disciples and shared a new commandment or mandate that we love one another just as he loved us. Sometimes we forget what our focus or our mission is as people of God or a congregation, and then we get reminders like tonight that our focus is to love as Jesus loved us. The mandate to love is the reason for this night we call Monday Thursday. Tonight we remember the Last Supper, and so we are celebrating Holy Communion. Just a reminder, if you're watching our broadcast, have your communion supplies ready. And just a reminder for those of you who are in the sanctuary, that we hope that you picked up Holy Communion as you came in. If you didn't, trot back to the table there and, and grab a cup and a wafer. I like to start every worship service by thanking those who make worship possible, because it's a team effort. I'm grateful for our worship team. Tonight, our taping technician is Pat Ogenen. Our usher is Kent Stern. Andy Grosskreitz is the worship assistant. Jean Carlson is at the piano. And our singers this evening are John Melby, Marlene Kaufman, and Sandy Hartman. So thank you all. Just a reminder that we worship again tomorrow night, Good Friday, at 6.15 p.m., both in person and online. And on Sunday, April 4th, this next Sunday that's coming up is Easter Sunday. We will worship at 9 a.m., both in person and online. We do ask that if you're planning to worship in person on Easter morning, that you let the church office know, or if you're here in the sanctuary and want to let Andy know after worship, that would be great. Uh, the office is open tomorrow morning, uh, Friday morning. Letting Andy knows allows us to plan out or reserve your seating. If you don't let the office know, you can still worship on Easter morning as space allows. Worship continues now with a hymn from a brand new hymnal that the Lutheran Church put out. Uh, and the hymn is called Three Holy Days and Fold Us Now. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. you. Let us pray. Holy God, you put all power and authority into the hands of your Son, Jesus. Jesus, who washed the feet, his beloved, the feet of his beloved in humble service. Jesus, who teaches us to love one another as Christ loves us. Jesus, who reaches out to us in love so that everyone will know that we are his disciples. Inspire us now to love and serve as Jesus first did. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We hear from Psalm 103. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse now. Excuse me. He will not always accuse. Now will he keep his anger, not will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our brokenness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far the Lord removes our sins from us. Here ends the song. Reading now from the Gospel of Luke. It's a long reading. You might want to sit down. Um, reading, uh, we've been reading from Luke. And so now we read from Luke's, uh, we'll be reading tonight uh, about what happened on that Thursday. Tomorrow we'll be reading Luke's version of the Passion. And then Luke again on Easter. Now the festival of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was near. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to put Jesus to death, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. And Judas went and conferred with the chief priests and the officers of the temple police about how he might betray Jesus to them. They were greatly pleased and agreed to give Judas money. So he consented and began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus to them when no large crowds were present. Then came the day of the unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had been sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John saying, Go, prepare the Passover meal for us that we might eat it together. They asked them, Where do you want to make preparations for this holiday meal? Listen, he said to them. When you've entered the city, a man will be carrying a jar of water. He'll meet you there. Follow him to the house that he enters and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks you, where is the guest room where we might eat the Passover holiday meal with the disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and they found everything just as Jesus had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. And when the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table, the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you I will not eat it until it is fulfilled then in the kingdom of heaven. Then he took a cup and he gave thanks, and he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves, for I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until in the kingdom of heaven. Then he took the loaf of bread, and when he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup is poured out for you in the new covenant in my blood. Then Jesus said, But one, the one who betrays me is with me right here at this table. His hand is here on the table right now. For the Son of Man is going to, it has been determined, but woe to the one who will be betraying. Then they begin to ask one another, which one of us could it be? Who would do this? Jesus came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives to pray. The disciples followed him. Suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said, Judas, is it with a kiss that you're going to betray the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with a sword? And then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come to arrest him, Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I was a bandit? bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you didn't lay hands on me. But this is your hour, the power of darkness. And they seized Jesus and led him away. Word of God, word of life. 
Thanks be to God. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Lord Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. Jesus was on earth, the flesh was very weak. He took a towel and girded himself, and he washed his disciples' feet. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. By Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the times of Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and our Savior, who is Jesus the Christ. I have no tattoos, but I have to admit I am intrigued by tattoos. Seven of us are up front, two have tattoos. You can decide. Some people actually have a negative stereotype about people who have tattoos but I happen to think that they are works of art. In addition to just seeing them as works of art, I am interested in trying to figure out what people think is important enough to permanently ink it on their bodies. Many tattoos are self-explanatory. The names of a child or a loved one or a cross or a scripture verse or a favorite flower or a heart. I'm talking about tattoos because just last week, I saw the photo of someone's arm with a tattoo that read, Judas ate two. That tattoo really got me thinking, why would anyone want a tattoo about Judas? He was one of the 12 disciples, but he was the traitor. The tattoo read, Judas 8, 2. I think the tattoo refers to Monday, Thursday. Hours before the death of Jesus on a Thursday, the disciples gathered to share a holiday meal. It was a holiday of Passover. Jesus sent Peter and John ahead to make preparations for the meal, and Judas had done some business of his own. Judas went to the temple police and the chief priests, and he made a deal. In exchange for 30 pieces of silver, which was about a month's wages for the average person at that time, Judas agreed to give information to the chief priests and the temple police as to where Jesus would be, and then he agreed to identify Jesus out of the group of people so that they could arrest Jesus. Well, the time came for the holiday Passover meal, which was on Thursday of that week, and Jesus and his disciples gathered in the upper room just as Jesus had told them they could do. All the preparations were made. Luke writes that the furniture was present, the special holiday meal, the dishes, the crafts of wine, and they gathered then for the meal. And Luke makes it clear that in the midst of that meal, Jesus knew already that someone would be turning him over and betraying him. Jesus knew Judas would be doing this. They gathered around the table and they ate the holiday meal. It's a meal, uh, the Passover meal is a meal of remembrance. Remembering the tenth and final plague that God brought down upon the Egyptians when Moses was begging the Pharaoh, let my people go. The Passover offering was a lamb that was slain, and then the blood marked the doorway. A lamb was sacrificed for the freedom and redemption of the people. And as they sat down to eat, Jesus knew that Judas was going to betray him. But yet, Judas was welcomed by Jesus at the holiday meal. As the tattoo said, Judas 
8, 2. And then after the meal was done, Jesus gathered the basket of bread and the craft of wine that were still on the table, and he explained that he was going to become the sacrificial lamb. No more would it be this lamb whose blood they remember from Passover, but he said, I will become the past sacrificial lamb, and I will be bringing you freedom. Now, it won't be freedom from Pharaoh, but this time it will be freedom from the power of sin that we have in our lives, our brokenness, forgiveness, and freedom. Freedom from our humanity, freedom from our mortality, so we can live in eternity with God. In the bread and the wine, there is new relationship, there is promise. And Jesus said, eat this meal to remember me and the sacrifice I'm making for you and the gifts that I'm giving to you. Jesus served the first Holy Communion and he included Judas. As the tattoo said, Judas ate too. In other gospel stories, the meal was then followed by the washing in the feet. We remember that Jesus took off his robe and he kneeled in front of the disciples and he washed their feet and he did this as a sign of his servanthood. He humbled himself and he knelt down and then he said, love in this same way. And when Jesus knelt before the disciples and washed their feet, he included Judas. Jesus washed the feet of Judas too. All this while then, they gathered together and Jesus led them out into the garden to pray. It was an agonizing prayer. Uh, Jesus prayed to God. He submitted himself to God for the suffering that he knew was coming. And he prayed for his disciples. Jesus prayed for Judas too. And while Jesus prayed, the temple police came and Judas motioned for them and went over to Jesus and kissed Jesus, showing the authorities which of the men in the garden was the rabbi Jesus. I've always wondered how it was possible for Jesus to feed the mouth of Judas, whose same mouth would betray him, with a kiss. A kiss, so intimate. Why not just point Jesus out? He's the one over there kneeling in prayer. And how could Jesus wash the feet of Jesus, knowing that Jesus was going to trample his heart, per se, within a few hours? After that Passover meal, Jesus showed no anger toward Judas, no harsh words. All he said was, really, Judas, with a kiss? Jesus got to feast that holiday meal. He got to eat and drink the first Holy Communion meal. He got his feet washed. He got prayed for by Jesus in the garden. The love of Jesus completely, graciously, utterly unconditional. He loved the ones that were easy to love, and he loved the ones that were unlovable. He loved Judas, and Judas ate too. I also wonder about how Judas felt that night. Jesus said he knew that one of them whose hand was on the table would be betraying him, and still Jesus passed the holiday platters of food around to everyone, including Judas. And Jesus still gave him the bread and the wine, and he said, these are my gifts of love and forgiveness for you all. Did Judas have some guilt as he took the bread and wine thinking, do I even deserve this from Jesus? Knowing what was going to happen out in the garden, turning Jesus over to the authorities, I think it's safe to say Judas probably wasn't worthy to receive anything from Jesus that night. But when we talk about being worthy, 
we have to get in the front of the line too. We're not worthy at all. When Jesus feeds Judas, it reminds us that Jesus invites and includes not just some people, but everyone, whether we deserve it or not. This is why Jesus invited tax collectors and sinners and betrayers and deniers and deserters every time he ate. Because they and we need Jesus. This Last Supper reminds us that Jesus invites everyone, no exceptions. No exceptions. Jesus gathers the good people, the okay people, the despicable people like Judas and me. He feeds them, he loves us, and he forgives us. No exceptions. We need the forgiveness of this meal that we're going to have in a few minutes. We need to remember what Jesus did for Judas. He does also for us. Forsaken, yet forgiving. Sometimes I wonder, what would I do if I only had one more day to live and knew it? Would I eat my favorite meal? Would I watch a sunset one more time? Would I hug my loved ones? Today is Monday, Thursday. Jesus knew it was his last day. He knew he was going to be arrested. He knew he was going to be tried. He knew he was going to be tortured. He knew he was going to be killed. Jesus knew it was his last day on that Thursday. And what did he choose to do? He fed Judas. He washed his feet. He shared forgiveness. And Judas ate Two, because of the gracious love of Jesus, Judas ate too. And that same forgiving, welcoming love means that we eat too. Thanks be to God. Amen. Receive the 
May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We remember that on this holy day, Jesus humbly knelt in front of his disciples and washed their feet. Jesus gives us the ultimate example of being a servant. Thousands of years later, we are now the ones called servants with the command to love one another as we have been loved by Jesus. May the gifts of our offering dollars serve as one more way we serve God in gratitude. <clears throat> you are able to make donations by visiting the Good Shepherd website and clicking online giving. You can also put your offering in the mail and send it to the church. And for those who are worshiping here in the building, you are welcome to leave your offering in the basket by the door as you depart. Thank you for your faithful support of the ministry of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, help us follow Jesus as he invites everyone to the table and includes sinners, betrayers, deniers, deserters, and all people to celebrate the feast together. Feed us with your love and grace. Help us to remember what Jesus did for Judas and what he does for us. Fill us with your very own life so we can take your love and forgiveness to every single person on earth. Let our love for you bind us to each other so that there is no one person left needy in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, heal the sick and comfort the dying. Grant wisdom and insight to doctors and researchers. Be with those struggling with illness and their health. We pray for Bebo Getchell, Julie Forder, Doug Schroeder, Gail Reddig, Aldo Overbo, Gordon Hansen, Bruce Lees, and Connie Olson. Surround them with compassionate care and comforting love. We offer prayers of sympathy to Mark and Sue Dundas, along with their son Christoph and his family, who are grieving the death of their 10-year-old granddaughter, Adela, Adelia. Hold them close in your loving arms, O God, and remind us all of your everlasting promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, where hearts are fearful and constricted, grant courage and hope. Where anxiety is infectious and widening, grant peace and reassurance. Where impossibilities close every door and window, grant imagination and resistance. Where distrust twists our thinking, grant healing and illumination. Where spirits are daunted and weakened, grant soaring wings and strengthen dreams. Give us courage to walk faithfully with Jesus, even when the road we walk is rocky, even when the message of the cross seems like foolishness, and even when we feel betrayed. Give us the grace to endure our troubles and joy in your presence. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
please stand? Please join me now in reading 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. In the mystery of Christ's resurrection, may you shine light into the darkness. You give bread that nourishes your people and frees, from, frees us from our fear. Help us savor the meal that promises forgiveness and life everlasting. Praying together the prayer that our Lord first taught us. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us break bread together. I invite you to serve yourself or each other communion saying body of Christ given for you blood of Christ shed for you Let us pray. O God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Receive the benediction. God, the source of glory. God, the word of life. God, the spirit of truth. Bless you now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.